One of the most uh, uh, important uses of energy in the body is the immune system. And now think of this, the logic. Let's say you have um, a bacterial infection and you have diarrhea and a lion is chasing you. How much energy should you put in to fight the infection and how much energy should you put in to run away from the lion? Forget the immune system because if the lion eats you, then the bacteria are his problem. <laughs> <laughs> so the issue is this. Stress hormones shut off the immune system. And the significance is, it's important, is that every one of you right now is infected with almost all of the disease germs that humans have. Right now, if I take a blood sample, I will show you you all have viruses and bacteria and parasites. And you might say, well, if I'm infected, then why am I not sick? Because if your immune system is working properly, it will suppress these parasites and germs. But the moment you start to shut off the immune system, then these organisms begin to start growing again. So the idea that you catch a disease is not really true. You already have the disease. And the med medical people call these germs and parasites opportunistic organisms. So uh, if, if you are under stress and you, sh and you shut off the immune system, then you give these organisms the opportunity to then make the disease. And yet when we get some of these diseases, we go to the medical doctor and they give us drugs to kill the germs and the bacteria. Well, this is very helpful if the disease is going very quickly. That was not the problem in the first place. The problem was stress that shut off the immune system. So to get, to get healing is, okay, treat the disease, but also treat the stress. Okay, so now we have two problems with stress. It shuts off growth and it shuts off the immune system. There's a third problem, which I call, uh, uh, well, it's, add it's adding more, more stress. It's adding more stress, a third problem. When you are in fight or flight, do you think you use conscious reasoning or reflex behavior? You use reflex behavior. So very important, listen, the stress hormones, I said before, squeeze the blood vessels in the gut, causing the blood to go to the periphery. But when the stress hormones come into the body, they also go to the brain and they squeeze the blood vessels in the front of the brain where consciousness is, to push more blood to the back for reflex behavior. That means when you're under stress, you are less intelligent. And for my example, I give you the people of the United States. And the reason is the government knows this. And ever since 911, they keep in the media, the newspaper, the television, more stress, more stress, and the result is very important. And the importance is this, since 911, every year, the pharmaceutical companies have made 20% more profit every year. In five years, 100% more profit in selling drugs. So it's important to realize that stress affects you in many different levels, but all of them result in shutting down your life. So in our next picture, it's like the cells People move toward positive growth attraction signals and people move away from fear or, or threatening signals. When you move in this direction, you're in growth and in the other direction, protection. And some things in our world are like elevator music, indifferent. It has now been demonstrated that love is the greatest growth signal in the world. For example, in uh, uh, Yugoslavia, uh, where they have orphanages, uh, uh, who was the, <laughs> the, the leader of Yugoslavia? Uh, Yugosla uh, uh, I think, you, don't you mean Romania? Romania. Yeah. Oh, Romania. Yeah, yeah go ahead with also it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Ceausescu was yeah, the leader. Yeah, yeah. That, uh, that people could not afford to take care of their children, and they sent them to orphanages. They got food, clothing, 
the protection of living in, inside. They got everything they needed to live except love. And about 40% of those children became autistic. What is autism is, is the, the child is shutting itself off from the world. It's in protection, closing itself down. And all of the parameters of health and intelligence in these children were greatly suppressed. They got everything but love. Okay, now the issue is, when we are in this direction in protection, we shut off growth and that's when illness starts. So when we're on this side of the scale, protection leads to disease and growth leads to wellness. And I said, well, what causes this disease? And the answer is stress. Now here's the problem that people do not realize. If I just remove the stress from my life, where am I on the scale? It's zero. If you want wellness, it's not just the absence of stress. You need the joy and the love to go to growth. So if you're in the middle place, you're not in real growth and real health. So stress alone is not the problem. It is what we need is more love and life and happiness. And all of this is based on perception of how you respond to the world. So now the most important question is, where do our perceptions come from? Number one, genetics. We get instincts we are born with. You do not have to teach a child how to pull its hand out of a fire. It is also very complicated instincts. For example, when a baby is born, every baby can swim from the moment it's born. It can be born underwater and swim like a dolphin. And this brings up a question which I'll answer in a little bit. If we were all born with the instinct and the ability to swim, then why do we have to teach children how to swim? And it's related to the second source of perception. And that is the subconscious mind where our learned habits and learned experiences are recorded. So I maybe I'll talk about the swimming now. Okay. When a baby is very young, the parents are afraid that the baby will drown. So every time the baby goes near the water, the parents, ah, ah, the baby's by the water. By the sink, by the toilet, by the brook, wherever the water is, the baby hears the parents get very excited. So the baby learns that water is dangerous. And it has a fear of water because the parents express the fear, so the baby is afraid of water. So when the baby is five years old, the parents buy, buy him a bathing suit. And they want to put the baby into the water, and the baby grabs the parents like a cat with claws. Because what is in the baby's mind? That the baby is, you're going to drown the baby. So the learned behavior can override the instincts. The third source of perceptions is the conscious mind, which is different than subconscious mind. The subconscious mind is learned habits. The conscious mind is creative programming. We talk about genetics because you were born with that as nature. It's in your nature to pull your hand out of the fire. But the subconscious behavior is learned, so it's based on experience, and it's called nurture. And for 100 years, science says, which is more powerful, nurture or nature? And it's a useless argument, because what's more powerful? Consciousness. When you are conscious, you can rewrite the instincts. And when you become conscious, you can rewrite the experiences of your life. So that it is important to recognize that what we are not using enough of in our world today is consciousness. And I will describe in a little while how most of our lives, 95% or more of our life, is controlled by the habits of the subconscious mind. Now the question is, in, d in development, what environment shapes fetal development. And the reason why the environment is important, as I showed you in tissue culture, the fate of the cell is controlled by the environment in which the cell lives. Whether it's just one cell or billions of the cells in a fetus, it's still the same response. 
So the question is, what environment is controlling the development of the fetus? You know what? Mama? The mom, absolutely. The mother's environment shapes the fetal environment. When a woman is having a baby and she visits an obstetrician, the obstetrician asks mainly three questions. Are you eating well? Are you taking vitamins and minerals? Are you getting exercise? Why so few questions? And the answer is this. Medicine believes the fetus is controlled by the genes, genetic determination. And so therefore, the development of the baby has nothing to do with the mother. And so therefore, uh, the mother's only role is to feed the baby. But as we talked about, the new science called epigenetics says that the environment controls the genes. Now think about this. this, this is an issue. Is there more in the mother's blood than just nutrition? Yes, emotions, yeah. the yeah. chemistry of emotions, the stress hormones, and all the other factors that control the mother's body also go into the placenta and affect the fetus. If the mother is happy, the chemistry of happiness makes the baby happy. If the mother is stressed or angry, the baby is stressed and angry. It's not the baby's brain that is controlling that, it is the response to the chemistry of the mother's blood. And now we know that the baby's brain is learning. Halfway through pregnancy, the brain starts learning. So the emotional patterns and behavior of the mother are being learned by the baby before it's born. But this does not leave the father out of the picture. Because if the father irritates or upsets the mother, then that is translated to the baby. 